The other thing that I can tell you, they've done a lot of research at HD Surgery on making those devices. However, uh, Chinese companies keep copying everything, so there are some Chinese copies of something similar, but they are making them out of plastic. So they're basically using similar molds and making plastic versions a lot cheaper so that they can uh, do the exact same thing, but they're just not as sturdy, they don't last as long, they may not be as accurate. Uh, I mean, he's pretty good at supporting his tools, and if there's a change or something, he'll release it, he'll send you a new one. But as a whole, uh, you know, just know there are some other solutions for doing that that you can find on eBay or AliExpress or whoever else you're doing. So, uh, the other item I want to talk about is a caliper. Inside the bags that you have, so the things that are yours are basically the book, the static mat, the black bag, and everything that's in the black bag. And then there is a black hard drive box outside there, which you're going to disassemble on Friday. So that's going to be yours to kill from that standpoint, but it's a laptop drive that's in there. Inside your bags, though, there is also a caliper. This is the only thing that adds any kind of science to this process. Otherwise, you're in really the realm of art resembling science. So you're trying to use a screwdriver most of the time to realign something till you see something or you feel something or you know where it's at. So you'll get to the spot where you will feel it. It will really make a difference. And it sounds weird. It's like being one with the machine and people who describe that, they sound crazy and insane, but you, you can become one with it and it does work. And you'll see me do it this week. Uh, otherwise, a caliper is your only other option that you can use. You can take measurements of where the head assembly is sitting and try to replicate the head assembly's position in a new hard drive. The problem is you cannot do it with Western Digital hard drives. Western Digital hard drives, as much as it seems like it might be a great idea because those will be the ones that you'll struggle the most with, Western, like this one, has a screw that's holding this head assembly in place. This is a uh, IBM Hitachi drive. So this one is going to have a, a screw through the head assembly that holds it in place. When you work on a Western Digital drive, you don't get lucky enough to have a screw or something there. As soon as you remove the lid, the screw that's through the lid is the one that's holding the head assembly in place. So as soon as you move the lid to take a measurement or do something, you have changed your measurement. So there's no way to do that. It's impossible. So I don't know a way. Maybe one of you will be creative and figure it out. What I'm doing is I would take a caliper, and you see where I drew a line? I would put this in a fixed position. There is a spot where you'll be able to move this and it won't move anymore. Once it gets in that position, then I take a caliper and I'm using this end to take the measurement, not this part. Normally people are using that piece to measure two things. Well, if you extend that, you can use that and it'll give you a digital readout. So I'm going to take the caliper and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to mark two spots. And usually I just take a post-it note and I say position one, position two, and I write and I do three different measurements because they're all going to be off by a little bit. You're talking about um, micrometers here, so you're in a very, very small amount of space. And if I do this three times, they'll all be off by a tiny bit. They won't be exact to each other and I can kind of take an estimate of what they are. And what I have figured out is that if I get in between 0.05, so like this is 630, if I get in between 0.05 of a measurement, it probably will work. That's how close I have to be. Half, 0.05, less than half a million, 0 .5, 0 0.05 millimeters off. Does that make sense? Which way are you going through it? Uh, so no, I'm on the outside edge, so I move this to its maximum position, which will be like this, it will be straight. Mm -hmm. And then I will take a measurement against the piece of metal on the bottom. So I'm going to stick the pen down, it's going to touch the piece of metal on the bottom, and the top part is going to be right there on that edge. Then I'm going to draw a line where that part is, and I'm going to take three measurements. And write this down on a post-it note, and then do that, and do that again. And so. Uh, as long as I don't have to move the platters to another device, then I can get pretty close. I think of it as a seesaw. So where this pin sits and it's screwed in is a balance. And so if I take three measurements, then I can get close on where the seesaw sits. 
so it kind of sits exactly in the same place. And then that way it's flat, and hopefully my head assembly is exactly the same because I'm pulling a head assembly out of another drive and putting it in here. So if I can get that measurement close, I have a pretty good chance. Does that make sense? That's the only real science I can add to this. You will get to a spot where it won't matter to you because you can feel it. You really will feel it and become one with the drive. There could be only one. Uh, and you will feel that screwdriver. You will feel it when it locks in. You will see it come alive. You'll see the drive respond, uh, especially on a deep spar. It's a little harder to do on an Atola because an Atola will constantly power it off and power it back on. Uh, a PC3000 gives you a little bit more of a fight, but you could do it on a PC3000. But the deep spar is the easiest to me because I can see it right away and I can respond to it right away. And I can power on and power off with a keystroke. So it's easy for me to go through a process of reassign, turn it on, turn it off, power it off, power it on, power it back, turn screw, power it off, power it back on, turn a screw, and just go through that process. You'll see we're going to do it. We're going to start on it tomorrow after lunch. We're going to start on it and we're going to do it over and over and over again, trial by fire, until everybody gets it. Okay? Most of the time, everybody fails on the first day. They don't get them working. They don't get them running. Uh, some of you have been maybe doing some of this for a while and have some skill, but generally speaking, it's, it's a struggle. So after that, then typically, you'll start to get the hang of it. And by the time Thursday rolls around and you spend the whole day doing it, you'll be able to get them and you'll start getting two or three in a row and it'll start feeling really, really good and really lucky. But you get to that spot. Now, I'll tell you, it's a perishable skill. If you don't keep doing it, then it will not work for you. You have to practice and you have to do it. If I go on vacation and I come back after a week of vacation, it will be like I never touched a drive in my life. And I literally have to sit down and do a drive as a practice drive. So I keep a 20 gig or 40 gig drive to practice on and I just do a practice drive before I do a client drive. It's a, it, I'm just telling you, there's also time frames during the day that things matter. Um, it's, it's not a good plan to start a hard drive rebuild at 4 o'clock in the afternoon because people want to go home at 5 o'clock. And if it takes you two hours, you may not be thrilled with that process. And you might be in a hurry or rush through it and do it. So I have a cup of coffee in the morning, then I do a stack of rebuilds until lunch or something like that. Then I move on to other stuff and then I come back to it the next day. So I go through those processes every day depending on what I have to do. But it really does make a difference. If, you're, if it's the day before Christmas and you're struggling to do it, like that would be a terrible time to do a hard drive rebuild that's important. Because you will make mistakes and you will unconsciously do different things. I promise you. It really does take care in this process. Okay. Everybody good so far? All right. You want to take one more break before we continue on with the last portion of tonight? Yes? Good? Okay.